When we come back, we'll take you to the city's newest hotel. And Jim will introduce us to New Orleans' newest breaker. Lakeside Hospital used to be for women only. In fact, over 50,000 babies were born here. Most people know it as an outstanding hospital where women have babies. But it's much more than that. Mr. Roberts, of course, is not going to have a baby, but is here. To tell you that Lakeside Hospital takes men. <laughs> yes, we wanted to make a point that Lakeside Hospital is total health care for women, children, and men. And men. The Erie Canal that linked Mid-America to the Port of New York took eight back-breaking years to dig by hand. That kind of determination made this country grow. Today, I see that same determination in hundreds of small to mid-sized companies whose new ideas, new technologies, and new jobs will continue to build America. At First Jersey Securities, we specialize in discovering emerging growth companies for today's investors with vision. First Jersey Securities, come grow with us. The city's newest hotel was on its toes for its grand opening today. The Hotel Intercontinental New Orleans commissioned a special ballet for the lavish ceremonies at the 500-room luxury hotel on St. Charles Avenue. The Central Business District Hotel is the sixth opened by the Intercontinental chain here in the United States. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. Sports. Yeah, they got their man today. Buford Jordan we're Great. speaking about, the Breakers' number one draft choice. He signed a five-year contract today. The former McNeese State running back didn't disclose details of the contract, which should place him in the millionaire tax bracket. The announcement was made at the Superdome today. Dick Corey and owner Joe Canazero presented Jordan with Breaker Blue items and a prediction. And I'm delighted to welcome Buford to us and to New Orleans and to the New Orleans Breakers. Uh, Buford, we want you to have this as a start. We're looking forward to, to Buford's many years with us. And I must tell you, as we were coming here, Buford and I had a little discussion, and we agreed that uh, from here, he's making his first steps toward 2,000 yards in this year with the New Orleans Breakers. How about that? Jordan rushed for over 4,000 yards to become this state's all-time collegiate ground gainer. He told media members today that he looks forward to playing spring football. You know, I was really thinking about the USFL. And when I heard New Orleans had drafted me, it made me even think more about playing USFL. Bart Starr was fired by the team he wanted. Now he's been hired to coach a franchise that wants a team. The ex-Packer head coach was named the head coach and director of operations today of the Phoenix Firebirds. The Firebirds would be an expansion franchise in the NFL if the group in Phoenix is successful in luring the NFL to Arizona. The 35th annual Senior Bowl kicks off tomorrow in Mobile, and Larry Matson reports this week of practice brought pro coaches and college players from all over the country to the Deep South. The Senior Bowl is a time for NFL head coaches to personally inspect and evaluate top collegiate talent. It's also time for their staffs to mingle with friends from other clubs in a relaxed and informal environment. It's a time for fans to meet some of the coaching greats, and it's business as usual for Saints trainer Dean Kleinschmidt who is working his 14th year with the South squad. Both coaching staffs agree that being here coaching in this North-South battle is an advantage in getting to know the players for the upcoming NFL draft. Yes, it uh, helps us a great deal. Uh, again, each uh, coach, uh, of course, working with his people, talking with them in meetings, and uh, being with them the whole week, we get a, a real insight to the individual, what type of uh, person he is. And, of course, this is very important to all uh, all pro uh, teams. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, when you work with them for a week, you get to know a heck of a lot more about them than you do by just standing out or watching them practice. And uh, uh, certainly their ability to take instruction, uh, uh, their attitude, uh, uh, how they respond to coaching, that type thing, promptness. Uh, you learn a lot about them, and certainly it's, it's a benefit to uh, coaching staff to be in this game. There are Gators, Eagles, Bulldogs, Longhorns, and Terps here but they'll be playing for those schools no more. They're officially professionals in this game, and the pro coaches are impressed with the talent they see. <laughs> Most of the players in Mobile will find employment in the NFL, or perhaps even sooner with the USFL. With the South team at the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, this is Larry Matson, Channel 4 Eyewitness Sports. 
Three of the four semifinalists in the Volvo Masters have been determined as Jimmy Connors moved into that group with a 6-4, 2-6, win over Tomas Smith this afternoon. John McEnroe and Mats Vlander are the other two. McEnroe got there with his quarterfinal conquest of Johan Creek last night. Along the way, he lost his temper and a racket. Frustrated at his own play, McEnroe slammed his racket to the court. He just couldn't seem to get a handle on himself. It cost him a $500 fine. Once he settled down, he dispatched Creek in straight sets. He'll play Mats Vlander, the tournament's number one seed, in tomorrow afternoon's semis. Connors will meet the winner of tonight's Ivan Lendl Andres Gomez match. McEnroe wins it last night, 6 4, 6 2. It's getting to be these days that if you don't make a million dollars a year in baseball, you're below the major league poverty level. The sport's newest millionaire is Boston Red Sox outfielder Dwight Evans. The 11-year veteran signed a contract extension through 1987 with the Red Sox today. For over a million dollars a year, that makes him the highest paid player in Red Sox history. Last year, he hit 238. I wonder how Ted Williams feels about Evans' new contract. When a game's on the line in the closing minutes, the cream usually surfaces, as it did last night for the unbeaten North Carolina Tar Heels. The Maryland Terrapins look for the first half like they might be capable of upsetting the top-ranked Tar Heels, playing imaginative ball like on this pass to Adrian Branch for the stuff. But that's when Sam Perkins and Michael Jordan got interested. Perkins started getting the ball inside and scored 18 of his 26 after intermission. Jordan totaled 21 and put his personal stamp on the win with a flying jam to end a 74-62 North Carolina win. And at the fairgrounds this afternoon, an 11th race exact of number seven, Iffy Times, and number eight, Clouds of Joy, returned 140-70. And that's a look at sports. All right, Jim. A couple dozen models were prancing and posturing on a runway at a downtown hotel this afternoon. They were modeling new spring-summer hairstyles, rehearsing for a series of fashion shows to be offered this weekend for hairstylists from across the country. The National Hairdressers and Cosmetologists Association commissioned about six designers to create the new cuts. Stylist Lyle McKay says the new shorter styles are designed to go with today's dressier fashions. Here's some of what they say. We feel that clothing dictates that hair be a little bit shorter, maybe even reminiscent uh, of the 20s or 30s, but yet with an extremely new and innovative look. The new collection of haircuts is called New Break. When we come back, Dave will have his New Break forecast for the weekend. And we'll tell you why all these balloons went flying today. Mackenzie's, like Mardi Gras, is an old New Orleans tradition. So this year, celebrate the official start of Mardi Gras with a king cake from Mackenzie's. Mackenzie's has a large selection of traditional king cakes in all sizes for all your family gatherings. And Mackenzie's introduces a new tradition which is sure to become a legend. A new king cake with plenty of sugar and cinnamon and covered with real rich creamy icing. So this year, start the new year outright with a king cake from Mackenzie's. I said to myself, Bob, why drink beer when you can drink champagne? I got the promotion, so why not get with a program? First, get rid of rent and start earning equity. So I bought this townhome at Avant Garde. Swimming pool, racquetball, hot tub, and great neighbors. I don't mind telling you the office crowd is a little jealous. I even have a skylight in the bedroom. Oh, excuse me, my mother's calling. Townhomes in the mid-70s at Chateau Estates. After recent technical difficulties, WAJY is happy to be back on the air playing your favorites. Come back to 102, WAJY-FM, where the music has style. If you were in the uptown area today and happened to look up into the rainy and dreary sky and saw a mass of multicolored balloons, you weren't seeing things. You were experiencing a very important lesson. For these students at the Newman Lower School, it was a lesson without books, a study of the weather. If children do things, they understand them. If they just read about them, they don't understand them as well. The experiment is simple. All kindergarten and fifth grade students send up balloons with notes attached, roughly 175 of them. Over the next days and weeks, they will wait to hear from people who hopefully find them. But how far and in what direction will they go? That's what these little scientists wanted to know from an expert meteorologist Dave Barnes. And lighter air does what? Does it sink or does it rise? Rise! It rises, and that's what makes the wind, and that's what we're going to study today. We're going and to so it begins. One, two, two three! Where do you hope 
hope your balloon goes? To my street, Amethyst, 761 Amethyst. Um, it's by the lakefront. To North Carolina. <laughs> Do you know anybody in North Carolina? Yes, my cousins. And that's not far-fetched. Last year, they got letters back from people in Alabama, North, and South Carolina. Yes, it's a lesson in wind and weather, but also a lesson in people and communication. Great fun today, and they also gave Dave a special balloon. Gave me my paper balloon. With a beautiful that? on it. It was yeah. great fun. There was a great something. group of kids. Appreciate and I learned it. a lot. I learned a lot, too. Bunch of good kids and had a real good time. But uh, we have a little rain this afternoon. Sure We're getting did. a little rain right now. Temperature is now down to 50 degrees, and it won't change too much tonight, just a few degrees below that. So it'll be on the cool side, but not too cold. The humidity 90%, wind from the northeast at 9 miles per hour. The barometric pressure 30.28 inches. At Audubon, a high of 53, a low last night of uh, 51 degrees. And during the past several hours, all areas have had just about uh, just a few tenths of an inch of rain. We had uh, two tenths of an inch, or rather two hundredths of an inch over at Slidell at the airport and here in downtown New Orleans. So the rainfall amounts have been quite light, and we'll take, check that out on radar in just a minute. The national map, that front is going through just a little behind schedule. We had it through a little bit later uh, on, uh, or rather a, a little ahead of this. Last night, we had, had it east of here about 100 miles, so it is a little on the slow side right now, but it'll go on through, and by tomorrow afternoon, it'll be down in Florida as this high-pressure center moves over east and takes hold on this part of the country and gives us uh, light northeasterly, light to moderate northeasterly winds between 10 and 18 miles per hour, and that'll continue through the weekend. So what does that mean for us? It means we'll be back into this cool cooler air mass, we'll have northeasterly winds, and we'll have cloudy conditions. West-northwesterly winds in the upper atmosphere are producing light overrunning conditions. This will keep the cloudiness in. We'll have some occasional rain at least through tomorrow and possibly on Sunday also. The overnight lows will range, I'd say, tonight mainly in the lower 40s. Tomorrow night, the upper 30s or lower 40s, somewhere in there. So not much change both nights. No freeze, no heavy rain, no bad weather, but kind of a dreary weekend all in all. The afternoon highs will probably range from about 45 to 50, so it'll remain quite cool even through the day. Elsewhere in the country, we have a good bit of snow up in the north part of the country. In fact, all across the north part of the country, I'd say about 50% of the area is receiving some kind of snow, whereas the action in the south is in our area, and it's really in the form of light rain showers. Let's go like, take a look at Channel 4 radar now, and you can see those scattered showers all throughout the area. Also, as you can see, since it's only blue, on here that all of this activity is quite light. So the rainfall amounts are quite light and not expected to get uh, heavy at all. Take a look at satellite now and where we have high pressure, we have some sunshine, but otherwise much of the country has cloudy skies. Quick look at that jet stream and with these west-northwesterly winds in this area here, up over this high pressure system, especially as it moves on east, the moist air will be rising cooling and condensing over that cold air, giving us cloudiness through the weekend, and also giving us some light rain at times, principally tonight and on Saturday, a little less chance on Sunday. Here's the national radar to see what's going on right now. And a quick look at Saturday's map. This is, uh, represents the positions of the frontal systems and highs and lows for tomorrow night, highs and lows for tomorrow and tomorrow night, and also those areas of precipitation. I'll be back in just a second. Sometimes you forget to really look at the things you see every day. The majesty of the river, the bustle of the port, the excitement of downtown on a sunny afternoon. The more you get to know New Orleans, the more you love it. And nobody knows New Orleans like the Whitney. The Whitney, a great bank for a great city. The action is at the fairground. Starting every Wednesday through a fabulous weekend, you can find thrills 11 times a day, and all this excitement begins at 1245. You can come out for lunch and stay for the last race under the bright lights. Make up a party and see the winner of the $25,000 Master Derby Handicap, featuring Derby hopefuls on Saturday. You can party Sunday and see the $25,000 Feature Diplomat Way Handicap. Be there when your winner crosses through the finish line. For real action, come to the fairground. Protect your loved ones with Security Plan Funeral Insurance. For details, call right or visit the Laudame Funeral Homes in New Orleans. 
cool this afternoon. The highest temperature on the map was Slidell. The Weather Service had a 60-degree reading. Otherwise, and our friends up here north of the lake, they had low to mid-50s. South and west, they were in the mid-50s mostly, and upper 50s over here on the South Mississippi coast. Coastal winds running from the east and southeast around 8 to 12 miles per hour at the present time. Let's look at that forecast now. It's going to remain cloudy and on the cold side through Sunday with occasional light rain. The lows ranging between 37 and 43. The next two nights, the highs mostly between 45 and 50. The marine forecast, small craft advisory, northeast winds 15 to 25 knots through Sunday, seas 5 to 8 feet, lakes choppy to rough occasional rain, sun, river, and tide data. One low, one high. The range, 1.7 feet, tides close to normal. Carrollton on the Mississippi, 6.5 feet, slow fall, sunrise 657, sunset 522. Monday through Wednesday, the outlook is for us to continue to be on the cold side. However, I think the chance for any significant rain isn't too great for that period of time. You can turn the faucets off, though, right? Yes, you may turn the faucets off. Goodness. Tonight at 10, utility bills from the Christmas deep freeze are going out now, and you might be surprised at how much more you'll be paying. We'll give you an idea of what to expect. Until then, have a good evening. Coming up next on PM Magazine, would you believe a football game between mothers and their sons? And right after that, we'll see the rock group called Stray Cat. Buick, proud sponsor of the Olympics, official car of the Sugar Bowl, celebrating the only place in the United States that 1984 Buicks are on sale at used car prices. 100 1984 Sugar Bowl Buicks, courtesy cars, some of them driven less than 100 miles, and we can't sell them as new. So they're going at used car prices right now, but only at your New Orleans Buick dealers. Crown in Metairie, Eagle on the West Bank, and Heritage in Gentilly. This is Channel 4, WWL-TV, New Orleans. Good evening, I'm Eric Paulson. And I'm Lisa and Claire. Welcome to PMS.